Welcome back to Capital View. I'm Roby Brock. And I'm David Goins. A lot to get to with our political roundtable. John Brummett, political columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and Bill Vickery, host of Sunday Morning Buzz on 103.7 uh, FM in Little Rock. Thanks, both of y'all, for joining us on the inaugural uh, yeah. liftoff here. It's our Excited. pleasure and honor. Don't uh, you think? I, I'm honored to sit next to you. <laughs> there of course. We, let, let's, let's start with um, Friday's developments because uh, everyone waited mm. for this, this potential historic vote. It didn't happen. Is that, is that good or bad for passage on Monday, do you think? Who wins the weekend? Uh, they weren't going to pass it today. They were going to get at most 70 to 71. They had a handful of legislators who said, if you let me go home and meet with my people, I can maybe persuade them and vote for it. The issue is, do they go home and persuade their people, or do they go home and listen to the people who elected them, who in many cases wanted them to do one thing, which was not do anything that Obama wanted them to on health care? So who wins the weekend? Uh, and that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I think you've got a core group of legislators on the House end and a core group on the Senate end that, uh, that were elected surrounding the issue of Obamacare, and they feel very strongly about it. Uh, if anything, um, uh, they're going to go back, I think. They want to, as John said, uh, I think they want to engage their community. You've got a lot of folks who I know feel like uh, they don't want to make a move without understanding where their constituency falls to begin with. Uh, you know, in Washington, they talk about it being the common ground people versus the stand your ground people. I think there's a little bit of that going on inside the Arkansas legislature right now. Yeah, but I would say this much, too. They're going to go mm -hmm. home, uh, and they have been over the weekend. They're hearing from the anti forces, and they're hearing from the pro forces, too, because you're going to have a lot of folks in support of this private option out there uh, asking them to support it, local hospitals, nursing homes, et cetera. Does it all just become white noise? Do they come back on Monday and they say, Man, I heard a lot of noise from everywhere. I think there are four or five who want to vote for it. They are convinced they can go home and make a conservative argument that this is better than doing nothing. It's certainly better than doing Medicaid expansion. I have been persuaded. Let me explain that to you. If and Randy Alexander, a very conservative uh, a Tea Party type, says that's what he's going to do. Now, Nate Bell is going to go back and have a town hall meeting and listen. Well, I think I know what he's going to hear. So it depends on how they approach it. Uh, and at some point, it all, I think this, the uh, speaker was just saying earlier, it is white noise at this point. I mean, the issue, I mean, it's been argued, it's been lobbied, uh, and there are maybe a half dozen, seven, eight votes that change within the hour sometimes. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're right. I think this could be a vote that, li that could literally come up to the 11th hour and we wouldn't know the, the outcome until, uh, until the, all the votes are cast. And kind of what's your thought on, you know, obviously you're elected uh, to represent 30,000 people. There's several votes a day. Um, but, but on this one, yeah. not quite ready. I mean, is there a sense that they need a permission slip before well, they can vote? I, I really do think you've got a lot of very smart, well-meaning people who, who care very genuinely about representing their constituencies. They ran as those kinds of candidates. And now it shouldn't come as any shock that they're actually doing what they said they would do. They, they feel very, very uh, tied toward representative democracy. They want to engage their constituencies. This isn't the old days of back rooms where you could uh, persuade somebody with some general improvement money for their district or something like that. This is kind of a new era now. You've got these guys who want to go back home and work their district. It, it's, it, it's more than that. It's, it's remarkable. We've had a, a Republican revolution in this state, and it was fueled largely by people's resentment of President Obama and his health care reform. And now the first majority Republican, conservative Republican legislature we have had since Reconstruction, it is now about to, I'm not going to say, implement Obamacare, but it is because that <laughs> doesn't work. But they are about to agree to an expenditure of federal money that is part of what the president's plan was all about. And it's remarkable that we're this close, but it comes down to, can you make the argument to the people who elected you that it's actually, turns out, this is the wise thing to do? And, and I think there's some that just feel like yeah. they've got to try to do that. And, right. and, and by the way, so much hinges on this, because I oh think man. whether they agree to it or not, other votes, other, other issues still pending in the Arkansas legislature hinge on this vote. Tax cuts, higher education funding, All general that. improvement funding, everything is on this. Yeah. We got to take a quick commercial break, but you guys will stick with us. We want to come back and have more of this discussion. I'm Roby Brock. We'll continue our political roundtable discussion with John Brummett and Bill Victory after this word from our sponsors.
Oh, I don't think it's going to be an easy conversation uh, because they are very strong-willed. I think it's going to be important to us that we know that you're somewhere in a facility uh, that looks after you, has compassion, has care, and you respect it. I mean, I'd love to look after them. I'd love to be able to take care of them, but I don't think I could. That'd be a wrong choice on my part. Arkansas's skilled nursing and assisted living centers provide quality care for our seniors. Farm Bureau helps protect its members in more ways than you might think. They've always been the voice of agriculture in Arkansas, working on behalf of folks like me when nobody else would. And Farm Bureau stands for the values that Arkansas families care about. They've protected my right to farm and make a living, which helps everybody who likes food on the table. You know what they say, Arkansas counts on agriculture, and agriculture counts on Farm Bureau. The Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. And welcome back to Capital View. I'm David Goins. I'm Roby Brock. And uh, we are rejoining our uh, esteemed panel, John Brummett and Bill Vickery here uh, this morning. Uh, John, let's kind of cut to uh, your column from earlier uh, this week in it. Uh, you said there may be some people who would just as soon see the session fail so that certain people, David Carter, and his uh, wingman, John Burris, won't be winners. Uh, as we stand now, probably just under 24 hours until they vote on Monday, do you still feel that's the case? It's weakening. Uh, it's becoming less a factor, but it has been a factor. Uh, some of the holdouts on voting for this private option were Republicans, not of the most right-wing variety, but some of the ones that I would consider, uh, nobody's a centrist in the Republican Party, but less uh, uh, extreme than others. And it turns out to be several of the people who were going to be lieutenants of House, of, of thought to be House Speaker Cherry Rice. You remember, he had it lined up if the Republicans won the uh, uh, House of, uh, control of the House. They did. But then David Carter comes out of uh, uh, sort of center field, start to say left field, let's say center field. <laughs> center and, right. and he says, we need, we, we need to govern this thing from the center out, and I'm the guy to do it. And he got Democratic control and a handful of Republicans, and he took control. And there are hard feelings. And these kinds of personal things enter in. There are some people who are just as soon he not have success, but I don't think it is a defining factor at this point. It's weakening. I think that's a great point by John. If you look at what Davy Carter has done as Speaker of the House, it, it, it's, you know, et tu, Brute, you've got, a, you, you've got inside your own party, you've got sort of internal fightings in terms of a power struggle with what happened for you to become Speaker. They're then acting like Democrats th almost, aren't exactly, they? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Then you've got half the body is, are, are Democrats. And so I, I think it's been a remarkable job by the Speaker. I think he's done an extraordinarily fine job as a leader considering everything that was going into this and the turmoil that could have surrounded the House. Let's talk about uh, on Friday, we saw some what I call federal intervention in the fact that Tim Griffin made some news yeah. on this by interviewing Kathleen Sebelius. We looked at that earlier in the yeah. show. You have Rick Crawford sent an email to conservative, uh, undecided Republican legislators. What's the reaction, do you think, to the state legislators seeing these federal guys get in their business? Well, I think it was a great question by Congressman Griffin to the HHS secretary. And I think she fumbled it unbelievably poorly. I mean, it, it couldn't have been, uh, we've not seen a question answered that poorly since that South Carolina uh, beauty pageant con contested. <laughs> didn't know where uh, Afghanistan or Iraq was or if we could read so it. So, in the so you're States. saying it wasn't inspiring? Oh, it it, well, it, it's, it's, it's true because now uh, over the weekend here, you've had guys home and, and I promise you that's come up. I promise you that's been an issue. Well, of course it's come up. I've seen the, the, the uh, the tweets. Uh, Sibelius hasn't even read the Arkansas yeah. bill. When did, we, when did we start expecting cabinet secretaries to read bills pending in the Arkansas legislature? The federal government, the DHHS, has given us the leeway 
to try to pass it, and they will look at what it is after we pass it and tell us whether they approve. And if they don't, the bill goes away. Let me give but you this one idea more. that poor old uh, Kathleen Sebelius is in trouble because she didn't know, well, hadn't read our bill. One more uh, real uh, quick here. Oh, okay. Ten, ten well, seconds on what will be probably the biggest political story, maybe next week, in addition to the session ending. Mike Ross on Wednesday, what's your thoughts there? No surprise. Uh, he's been in for a while. I think he's been posturing. Um, be a, it will be a rough and tumble Democratic primary. That benefits Asa Hutchinson in the fall. John? I think uh, Ross is the uh, strongest uh, Democratic candidate. Uh, he wants to sort of be the next, he wants to inherit uh, the BB style of governing. And uh, I think he's the favorite and a strong candidate. And the Democrats certainly need one. John Brummett, Bill Vickery. All Gentlemen, right, thanks thank for being with us, guys.